My name is John Ferner, and I wanted to uh, welcome you to the uh, Vivit uh, webinar today, Reduce Time to Value with Automated Discovery and Service Model Maps Using HP Software. We thank you so much for uh, spending time with us uh, this morning uh, to review this uh, solution and how you can drive value uh, for yourselves and your organization. This uh, webinar is brought to you by uh, Vivit as well as by uh, HP. Uh, please notice the uh, hashtag here on Twitter that you can uh, follow up and uh, track uh, information. Uh, we'll provide a little bit more information about that and the opportunity uh, for you to use that uh, here shortly. In terms of uh, introductions, my name is John Ferner. I'm the uh, president and founder of Results Positive. I've uh, been specializing in IT transformation uh, for the last uh, 15 years. And for the last uh, 10 years, as Results Positive as a platinum partner, helping customers get value out of their software investments, but more importantly, helping them achieve their personal and organizational goals and objectives. We have a great uh, panel uh, with us today. We have uh, Mark Bradley, Product Marketing Manager with HP. Uh, Mark's uh, one of the sponsors today, so we really appreciate uh, the opportunity to collaborate with him and his sponsorship. Mark uh, comes to us with uh, great experience here across uh, the HP portfolio. He's uh, managed uh, product development and uh, product management for uh, multiple products. He's also been a uh, contributing author uh, to uh, implementing service and support process, a practical guide. So I'd like to uh, welcome uh, Mark today. We also have uh, Sandeep Parmer. He's a senior solution architect as part of the results positive operation practice. Uh, Sandeep comes to us with hands-on operational experience, as well as uh, many years helping customers uh, get value out of their operations uh, solutions and processes, uh, specifically around the foundational component here with the CMDB and now with uh, automated service modeling. So for just a second here, I'd like to uh, turn it over to uh, Mark Bradley to talk about a series of webinars and some of the promotions that uh, he and his team are providing. Great. Thank you, John. Welcome, everyone. We're excited that you're here, and uh, thanks for uh, taking time. Um, we're running a, uh, this is part of a series of webinars. Um, we've got uh, webinars between now and all the way in through uh, HP Discover, and uh, later on in the presentation, I'll share with you the schedule, and uh, we'll proceed from there. And what we'd like to do is take advantage of a little bit of social media using the hashtag HPDiscover-CMS. And then as you see things um, that are presented that you like, that you want to share, that you want to have a, you know, have a positive opinion about or some ideas, uh, feel free to put that on, on social media. And then uh, we'll randomly pick uh, folks and, and offer uh, um, Amazon gift cards. So we're excited that you're here. Um, we want to share the news, and um, we'll proceed from there. So. Thanks again, and, and John, back to you. Thanks so much, Mark. Uh, first, uh, just a couple of uh, general housekeeping uh, items for everyone. Uh, please recognize that this is a live session. Uh, that will be recorded and then made available to all Vivid members uh, after the session today. Also, uh, you are provided with a uh, question uh, panel, uh, so feel free to uh, take advantage of that to ask any questions. We want to make sure that this is uh, giving you answers to some of your technical questions, uh, hence uh, the focus today around uh, the technical expertise as well as providing hands-on demonstration uh, of the technology. Uh, one of the other things that we wanted to do as well uh, is to uh, give you a chance to uh, provide us a little bit of background information so we can be better prepared as we uh, go through uh, today's uh, presentation and uh, demonstration. Mark, you had a, a few questions that you wanted to uh, ask the audience? Sure. Let's go ahead and um, kick off the poll. And let's look at the first one here. Do you currently use HP ASM? All right. So it's just a simple yes, no, and it's, uh, it's, or it's in our future. And it looks like... Um, Great. I can see the, the tabulations. We've got about 65%, 66. I want to get it right up to about 70, 75 if I could. We're at right at 69. So, oh, there we go. 70, 71. Great. 
So it looks like a lot of folks are uh, are joining us to uh, to learn more, and it's uh, it's part of the future. So let's go ahead and uh, close the poll and let's take a look. So John, based on your experience in the industry, working with customers around the world, how does this um, how does this uh, go against uh, what you've been seeing? Or can you see the poll? Uh, I, I can't see the poll, Mark. Okay. Uh, so it's, um, there's uh, 21 percent say yes, 59 percent say no, and about 20 percent uh, it's in our future. Uh, yeah, Mark. So that's definitely in line with uh, what we're seeing with customers. Uh, so uh, I see that that's going to be accelerating here uh, shortly uh, as the technologies come out and uh, as it's had the, the last couple of releases. So I think uh, you know this next uh, couple of uh, quarters, you're going to have uh, a lot more uptake uh, in using the technology with some of the new releases. Great. Let's go with one more, if we could. Let's go with, um, do you currently use HP Universal Discovery? And again, it's a yes, no, uh, it's in our future. And in here, I think, uh, based on what we're seeing in early results, uh, we have quite a few folks that uh, are utilizing uh, HP Universal Discovery. All right, so we're about to 75, 77. There we go, 78. Great. So let me go ahead and uh, we'll go ahead and close that poll. And uh, we have about 66% that say yes, 13% that say no, and 22% um, it's in our future plans. Uh, Mark, that uh, supports what we're seeing. Uh, a lot of customers have been using uh, Universal Discovery or previous versions of Universal Discovery uh, for quite some time. So. Um, I think the uh, combined of universal discovery is uh, obviously uh, something in the future for others. So uh, right in sync with uh, what we're experiencing in the field with customers. Sounds good. Okay. Well, I'll pass it back to you. Thanks so much, Mark. We appreciate that. And want to thank everyone for uh, answering the poll questions today. I want to provide just a brief introduction to uh, Results Positive. Uh, introduce uh, the automated service model uh, and talk a little about uh, what we're going to cover today. And really, just uh, give uh, all the time over to uh, Sandeep so he can actually jump into the solution and really walk you through uh, how to uh, perform uh, a top down automated service model. Uh, so, in terms of results positive, we really focus on business technology solutions uh, and cover the different domains across IT, which we'll highlight here shortly. Uh, we do provide consulting services anywhere from upfront strategy and assessments all the way through to uh, implementations and training. We also provide uh, application development. Uh, so this is building uh, custom web apps, custom mobile apps. It's also uh, building uh, solutions to, to augment uh, and to uh, take advantage of HP's uh, software. Uh, and we also provide uh, managed services for customers uh, that are looking for SaaS or looking for an ability to have a, an ongoing service in support of their uh, software investments. In terms of the areas that uh, we uh, specialize in, uh, project and application portfolio management, really helping on the strategy side, decide where to invest, and then be able to track and monitor uh, the ability to achieve uh, those investment results. Uh, also then focusing in on uh, service management, uh, having that uh, central place for, uh, for a service request to come in, and then being able to provide that service. And we all know that uh, change impact analysis uh, here associated with uh, the CMDB as one key component. And that's where the automated service model comes into play by creating those uh, service maps. Uh, we talked a little about uh, application development and management. And in this space, we uh, support not only uh, doing development, but also uh, helping uh, organizations uh, plan and uh, understand their requirements, focus in on test management, as well as then text execution uh, from an uh, automated uh, functional testing perspective, as well as a, a load testing perspective. And next, we help customers uh, really monitor uh, how they're doing, uh, how they're uh, monitoring their delivery of services, uh, how they're monitoring delivery of business transactions, as well as just the core infrastructure. And then we also help customers uh, drive productivity gains through automation, uh, private cloud, hybrid cloud, uh, et cetera. In terms of our consulting uh, service offerings, we really focus in on 
looking at uh, the strategy, understanding the goals and objectives of our customer, our focus on helping them meet their personal as well as their organizational goals, and then from there establishing uh, that joint uh, blueprint and roadmap and assisting them through the process to uh, design and roll out new processes, process enhancements, uh, apply the technology, and then assist with the organizational change and training. So what I wanted to do uh, next here is provide a brief introduction to HP's automated service model uh, technology, uh, give everyone uh, an overall view of that. Uh, as we uh, then uh, jump into the uh, actual uh, demonstration. As we mentioned uh, here uh, for the title of today's webinar, it's all about accelerating time to value. And uh, we will look at that in a couple of different ways. Uh, so one is, how do I uh, create more value for myself, uh, say as someone that's supposed to uh, build uh, service maps? So that's providing me with technology so I can build a service map quicker. And then I can start focusing on higher value uh, activities. I can start uh, focusing on impact analysis and really supporting the business. Uh, next, uh, I can uh, really assist in uh, ensuring that uh, the uh, models are correct, uh, analyzing those models based on discovery, as well as then uh, tweaking those models. And then overall, the, uh, the time to value uh, means that I can have a service model active and available much quicker. I can then start improving mean time to repair. I can start really uh, improving the delivery of services against those applications, against those services uh, much quicker. Uh, and so that's really where uh, what you look at here is this accelerated time to value uh, for automated service modeling is a foundation component which accelerates the higher levels of value in the organization. So in terms of uh, what we'll be highlighting today, we're going to be highlighting these first two areas here when it comes to uh, overall service models and how to set up your service model. So first we're going to focus here on the automated service model uh, solution. And that's where you can have that top-down approach to uh, really identify an application, identify a uh, service, and be able to use the technology uh, of discovery and mapping and uh, have the system to uh, automate uh, that process for you. Next here in the middle, we'll actually highlight and provide a demonstration on the assisted service model. So not a lot of uh, customers understand that model, but that's also available. And so that's a, a template-based framework that can assist you in further accelerating uh, the uh, development of custom uh, service models that you might not be able to automate. And then most of everyone probably uh, understands or has a uh, work with the standard uh, discovery mapping uh, process where you can use automated uh, discovery, but then uh, doing some of the manual correlation and mapping. And so uh, what we're going to highlight today is how you can accelerate value using the automated service model as well as the assisted service model. So just a brief overview here on the uh, service model itself, and this is the top-down automated approach. Uh, so the Ability to uh, really create this uh, automated service model uh, really streamlines your level of effort in setting up a service model which can be used for the business. Uh, so one way you can do this is starting at the entry point uh, of that particular service, as you can see here on the right. So how does a, an end user typically access uh, that particular service or that application? So I can uh, start at a URL point and uh, then turn it over to Discovery. It'll do the automated mapping. At that point, then I can evaluate uh, the results of that automated map, and then uh, I can uh, make tweaks and updates, and then I can apply automation to keep that updated. Um, so that's a high-level flow, if you will, for the top-down automated uh, service model. Uh, there's another uh, approach here, too. Instead of just using uh, the URL approach, you can also uh, use and select the enterprise application uh, approach as well, which we'll highlight. So overall here, it's all about reducing time to value. It's about adding richness, richness uh, to your service maps, which is going to then drive value in your change impact analysis and your service delivery, uh, your customer service. And then on the event management side, you can use that then to reducing your mean time to repair, uh, as well as uh, giving you an ability to correlate and uh, focus on the core root problems versus the symptoms. So this is a foundational component that can really drive uh, overall value as you manage your services. 
we wanted to also provide you with uh, some information about the different technologies. Um, so from an automated service mapping perspective, here are the, the currently uh, supported technologies. So uh, as a part of the process that you go through in setting up your automated service model is to uh, kind of assess uh, that service and the associated applications, understand the technologies associated uh, that would be best fit and uh, supported here from an automated service model perspective. Uh, next, uh, as we mentioned before, there's uh, enterprise application templates. And so this is another way to uh, allow for that automated uh, service modeling uh, by starting with uh, specific uh, application templates. Uh, these templates will be growing over time, but uh, these are uh, some common uh, enterprise applications, and this allows you to uh, quickly uh, map those applications. Uh, next, uh, just to let everyone know that uh, the Animated Service Model 10.21 uh, recently came out, and uh, if I were to steal the thunder of HP product management, the big thing here is it's five times faster. Uh, and uh, we should be able to see that uh, a little bit today in our demo environment, even though that's challenging to do in a demo environment, but we should be able to see that. And we can see here that uh, we've got some new TCP-based uh, uh, ASM discovery, some enhanced uh, configuration uh, file discovery, as well as uh, some additional technologies. So we see these, uh, these uh, additional capabilities here is helping to drive uh, more customers uh, using the solution and getting that value. Um, next here, uh, and I'm going to going to turn it right over to Sandy here. Uh, I kind of walked through this uh, earlier, kind of the four-step process here to uh, create uh, your automated service model. And uh, in terms of uh, starting points, uh, when you have a chance to uh, start, you've got two starting points: so your URL as well as your uh, enterprise application. So uh, if we could uh, turn it over to Sandeep now and, and move to the uh, All right. stage here. You, so Sandeep, I'll turn it over to you. All right. Thanks, John. Really excited to uh, get started uh, with our first use case today, uh, which is uh, to uh, discover an application top with a top-down ASM or automated service modeling approach. Um, so what we're going to do in our first use case today is to define the entry point which uh, typically uh, for an application could be a URL or a starting front-end server uh, for my Exchange application or some of the other applications. So in our use case, we'll use URL and uh, we'll start the modeling process and uh, wait for the map to populate automatically all the different um, uh, topology information of, uh, related to the application. So we have uh, in our demo environment a web server application that, uh, we have, uh, that we are going to uh, use the top-down discovery for. So out of the top-down automated service map, you could actually create, build your map based on how you want to consume them. So you could be looking at a map with, from a very high-level perspective, uh, looking at, okay, what are the high-level topology configuration items uh, for my business application or business service? Uh, but at the same time, the map also allows you to kind of provide you a drill-down view into uh, details of your application components, network components, or storage elements. And we'll talk about that once we are in the demo by showing the layered view of the application map. So typically, uh, these are the steps that uh, you uh, for, are critical for preparation for your uh -huh. ASM modeling approach. Uh, of course, you select a business service that you want to uh, model, and then you Validate, um, as John mentioned uh, in one of the previous slides, there are supported technologies uh, that ASN uh, feature supports today, and uh, those technologies keep on adding with their latest content packs, uh, releases, uh, so always look for the release notes, um, and uh, ensure that the uh, technology used by the service is supported by the ASN feature. And then also, it's, uh, you know, determine what is the service map purpose, well, whether we are discovering the map uh, from a generalized uh, topology perspective or we are looking to um, cater a specific user request from a database perspective or any other uh, application topology, uh, topology components or to enhance our processes such as impact analysis uh, and so forth. Uh, and of course, you collect the URL information or whatever your starting point uh, could be for your application. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, typically URL is um, 
a, a pretty good starting point for most of the applications, uh, web applications. And then also, it's important that we access our, we secure our access credentials. Um, so knowing about the topology of the application uh, from your general application mapping exercises uh, is, uh, is pretty good. And, uh, you know, you're prepared for the credentials that you expect the uh, application to uh, query to. So things like load balancers, um, maybe app layer, web layer, uh, and the underlying infrastructure. So it's good to be prepared with that. Mm -hmm. And then finally, look, pick up the service layers that you, uh, you want to uh, use in order to uh, accomplish your purpose of your mapping exercise. Uh, that was the bullet number three over on this slide. With that, with that uh, without wasting any further time, I'll quickly jump on to our demo environment. So I'm logged into UCMDB 1020 using latest uh, browser 4.02, and uh, I'm push on to the service modeling dashboard. So here on the service modeling dashboard, uh, you would see that I have um, all the services and applications that are being modeled listed. So they have uh, typical information that what is the business criticality, who's the owner, stakeholder information, and we'll get into details of uh, how to enter those information. On my left, I have this green button which says create service model. So I click on that. So it provides me this option to select my entry point. Um, so the default option selected is the URL entry point, but if I do a drill that, uh, or select this drop down here, I would see that there are different perspectives for different applications that come out of the box. And this list keeps on increasing, and you could actually build your own perspectives as well. Uh, but what this allows you to do is, uh, for a well-known application such as Exchange or SharePoint, Active Directory, or some of the Oracle app, uh, to really provide a customized map uh, to uh, those uh, well-known applications. Um, but for in this case, we are just going to use the URL entry point, and I'm just going to enter the URL for my application real quick. And with that, uh, we can, on the, on the right-hand side, we can check the availability of the URL right away from the tool itself. So this is, again, to uh, ensure that uh, your discovery probes or universal discovery probes are actually able to reach the URL before you actually start uh, your uh, discovery activities. Further, you have this uh, hyperlink over here which says more properties, and it's an optional. You can actually start modeling um, right from here but I highly recommend to use the uh, additional properties tab here to provide a name to your business application. You can do that later as well. Uh, you can uh, rename your configuration items uh, in the ASM, but uh, I, I would ha highly recommend that you enter that uh, before you actually start your modeling. So in this case, um, for my application, I'm going to enter new plan. And in the CI type or type, uh, you will actually see we can select what kind of uh, uh, modeling we are doing, whether we are modeling in a business application or a business service or an infrastructure service. In my case, I will select business application, but you have different options to select there. Um, in the ownership, uh, ownership dropdown, I can select the owner for my application. In this case, I'll select Chris. And this list is actually populated by the CI type person in your configuration management database. Um, same thing for the stakeholders. Uh, again, the list is already populated for me. I just need to select uh, from the drop-down that is available. And then the business criticality is something which I can also define right away. Um, so uh, if this is platinum or gold, depending upon what kind of uh, business service it is, uh, I can also select the uh, criticality. For this, I'm just going to select medium. And then I can also add the description uh, to my application service model uh, to say, okay, this I think the other user is going to uh, access this model. They would actually know um, this, what this application model is supposed to do. So I'm just going to write a note, this is a fans application. And in the category, you can select the deployment type of your application. So whether it's a test uh, environment application, dev, prod, uh, uh, you could actually like make, a, uh, make that category or select that category here. I'm just going to do draft for our demo purposes. And then once I've filled out all this information, I'll just click on Start Modeling button here. And in the back end, what we'll, we'll do is that it will kick off 
uh, or request the probes to actually go out there and start uh, creating those uh, or activating those discovery activities. As you can see on the right hand side top corner, I got a success message and uh, it right away the top ASM feature created a business application CI for me. Um, so that's pretty much what it knows about the application at this time when you actually kick off. Uh, on the left hand side, you have this discovery tab that you could actually click if it drop down again. That actually shows you your discovery activity in the real time. So you're actually uh, tra tracking what is happening with your discovery activities. So at this point in time, it says it, there is zero out of one task being completed. Keep in mind that this is more of a spiral discovery approach um, that UCMDB or universal discovery takes. So I may be kicking off um, just an IP discovery at the first point, but once I get results out of the first discovery, I may take off additional three more activities to discover um, further elements that I have got back from my as a result of my first discovery. So as you would see, these tasks will actually keep on increasing as you move forward um, or as you give it more time um, to um, discover. So typically talking about with the new ASM 10.21 uh, enhancement feature, uh, you could actually be looking at a timeline between 5 to 20 minutes to actually uh, typically discover most of your uh, application elements and dependencies. Also within the same UI, you could actually look at if there are any discovery issues, uh, you would actually be reported over here in the same UI. So you don't have to actually go to the admin UI of UCMDB um, to actually troubleshoot uh, any of the discovery issues. Now, as you see, we pretty much discovered the WebSphere, app, WebSphere application uh, and the running software and some of the Oracle instances, um, although it's you know, the discovery is still running on the left, and we might discover some of the additional components, uh, and this map could actually keep in progress, uh, could be a, a, a working model in progress uh, till the time it finalizes all the discovery jobs uh, that it needs to run. But the overall value uh, is really reducing your time to value to actually do something like this, but by using the ASM feature. So from there, now I see that I have the topology being discovered. And I can actually, while the discovery jobs are running in the back end, I can actually do some of the additional, uh, I can take some additional actions right away, uh, really depending upon what the purpose of, the map, of my map is. So as an example, to look at the additional information about my CIs and the topology that have been discovered, I can click on history changes. And this will actually provide a number at the bottom of my CIs that, okay, how much, or how many changes have been discovered over a period of time, uh, and that you can customize that period of time uh, for that particular CI. So it, I can drill down into this number right here, and it will actually list down for me whether it's in changes related to relationships of the CI, or it is actually the changes in an attributes that are part of that CI. So pretty cool that I can actually uh, run those kind of, uh, get those kind of additional information right away. And as you could see that there are different additional information that uh, uh, are available as well. So for example, monitored versus not monitored nodes or CIs, uh, request for changes, um, assuming that we have an integration with the ITSM to get populate that information uh, in the CMDB. Next, uh, I wanted to show the uh, layers, persp uh, layers uh, perspective to the application map. Um, so we talked about earlier that you know we have the purpose of the map. So within the same uh, map, I could actually have create multiple perspectives. Typically, or traditionally, you have been doing that using your modeling studio. You would actually create perspectives and then have them available for your end users or end customers. Uh, from the browser itself, you could do pretty much the same thing. You have pre-built add layers. Uh, you could actually use them to drill down into specific areas of your application topology. So for example, if um, I want to look at what are the OS nodes uh, that are being um, consumed or are part of this particular application. So I select that and I click on show layers. That is actually going to populate for me the, the connected nodes or the nodes that are actually being used by the application. So straight away, uh, I get a result that this is the Windows node uh, that is being uh, part of that application. It's running this step for application server on it, and that also has a direct relationship with the uh, some of the Oracle 
uh, instances and the listeners. And also I have this another node which so far I just know the IP address of it and uh, you know from further discoveries I may have additional have some additional information about what that node is doing but from where the stage or uh, the level we are with the discovery here we know that there is a dependency on this node. So depending upon if that is on your IP ranges or you have the appropriate permission for that node, you would further be able to get more details on that. Similarly, uh, John, uh, John mentioned earlier that there is with the new ASM feature, um, you have the new TCP uh, information uh, populated within your service model. So I'm going to select service connection point. So what's gonna, that going to provide me is what are my active uh, TCP connections on my uh, on my CI. So for example, on this web fair application server, I see that it's actually an active connection on port 1521, which is probably consumed by an Oracle node. And I can actually see that direct relationship in here for an example. So a lot of different stuff, a lot of cool stuff you could actually do from show layers. You can actually drill down to the networking components, storage components, uh, really depend upon how deeper you want to discover or keep your ma maps uh, uh, to be at how much, what detail level you want to go with your map. So I'm going to close and move out to our back, uh, back to our application map. So on the left hand side, I see that the discovery is finished and it says finished with the errors. So I'm going to click on what, what are those errors? So on the right hand side, it shows me that there's a connection timeout happening on this particular Oracle CI. So I further drill down to, into it. So it says it's trying to telnet and the, uh, the connection to the remote agent or basically the to telnet connection is timing out. And this could be typically due to maybe a firewall or maybe a credential issue. Um, so I can right away from the UI, write the, uh, send that email notification to the administrator to actually look into the problem and uh, and get the access level fixed for me. So I think that's a really uh, added value where you could actually do all, manage all your discoveries uh, pretty much end to end from the same UI. All right, that's pretty much from the, that I had for the top down discovery for our first use case. I'm gonna move back to uh, our presentation for an, and uh, get started with the assisted service model, which is our second use case for the pre presentation today. So in our first use case, what we did, we discovered these different CIs. App, uh, we created an application CI, and uh, we discovered some of the software elements uh, that are part of our application, and we also discovered uh, some of the infrastructure elements. Now, typically, what the, the way we would have modeled it in our UCMDB is using Modeling Studio to then create models by writing some SQLs uh, and uh, grouping uh, the CIs and then under a container. Um, what assisted modeling in the UCMDB browser allows you to do is actually create you those models uh, on the fly uh, without actually gaining any expertise of how to write down TQLs and to work with the admin UI. I think it really simplifies overall process of modeling your applications. Uh, and uh, again, it goes back to our agenda for today is to, to reduce your overall time to value to start consuming the information uh, as soon as possible. Again, you can actually use the layers feature. Again, with, you could pretty much use the same features that we saw on the ASM top-down discovery to actually consume the information from your model's application. And uh, to the point, they also come with the uh, out-of-the-box templates that you could select uh, from a drop-down that how you want to view your application topology. And we'll drill down into that uh, once we go back to our environment. All right. So here's the steps you would typically do, take to create your service model. So you basically, the first step is to actually select a CI where you, which you want to model. Or you can actually start from scratch. You just start from scratch with, the, with a template and then select your CI. Um, so anyway, either way, you could actually get started. And once you have finalized your CI, then the template you actually going to use, then you add your CI to your template and then save the template. That's pretty much what the process is. Sounds pretty straightforward, uh, pretty simplified versus what traditionally you might have been doing with your modeling studio. And the good part is that if you had modeled your application in your modeling studio, 
already, you can actually consume that information in the UCMDB browser. So you don't actually lose all the work that you have done. And you can further enhance those modeling uh, using the browser. So again, uh, the highlights of the steps. So we select the configuration items, identify the templates, add the relationships, save the model, and then validate the topology that whatever changes we made to the model have been saved. With that, I'm going to jump back to our demo environment. So if I go back to my dashboard here, there is a hyperlink on the left-hand side, uh, which is called Start Assisted Modeling. So I can actually start with just blank, selecting my template, or typically how I would actually use it uh, from in our use case is I now have an application that has been discovered, and my use case is that I now I uh, really want to use that application or uh, uh, to further model that application to uh, a business service. So I'm going to take the approach for start assisted modeling here. And it might take some time to load up my dashboard in here. So uh, let me just refresh. I think there is, uh, it might be something on my dashboard. So yeah, while I'm doing that, um, I would like to, uh, again, go back to my earlier point where, uh, you know, the, the entire purpose of the assisted modeling is to uh, map your uh, topology in a way that you want to consume it. And uh, assisted service modeling, I believe, is uh, pretty much replaces uh, the R enhances your process, your, your uh, existing process to, um, uh, your existing processes to kind of uh, uh, model your application. I'm actually going to just try another browser here. <clears throat> While you're setting up, uh, Sandeep, we, we do have a few questions yep. if, uh, if, if you want to jump in while you're setting that up or... Oh yeah, sure. Great. I figured we'd take a couple and then let you uh, let you get organized there a little bit. Um, sure. Let's see. I'll, I'll kind of first of all, thank you for all the questions. Um, both uh, Shaw and I have just been kind of going through the questions, and and um, we thought we'd take a couple of them and and uh, uh, respond to them, and then um, and then get back to the demo. Um, the first one is uh, is ASM part of Universal Discovery? And the answer is yes. Uh, the second question, um, how is ASM licensed? And I should probably go to, uh, um, Shaw, are you able to, uh, are you on? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, you sound okay. great. Okay, all right. Yeah, so ASM is licensed separately. Um, and uh, if you own a UD license, you will get the first 10 model for free. So you can test it out and try it out, and then anything additional would be additional your license that will be added to the to the contract. Great. And then, what does ASM stand for again? That was one of the questions. Uh, for automated service modeling. Great, great. And then, what technologies are supported by ASM? Well, there's a good list of it. Uh, we uh, continue adding more, right? That's actually one of our top priority as we move into the next uh, couple of rounds of releases is to add more and more content into ASM. Currently, we have ASM supporting things like generic uh, TCP, uh, majority of the application server, Tomcat, uh, WebLogic, WebSphere, uh, databases, uh, uh, Oracle, SQL, Server, MySQL, Postgres, and uh, we have a uh, uh, couple of versions of different load balancers as well as uh, some of the uh, SQL on platform. Wow, very impressive landscape of coverage. Great. Um, this one was a pretty good one, so I'll go ahead and read this one. Do you recommend tracking desktop applications and mapping them in UCMDB? And if yeah. we don't map them in UCMDB, 
do you recommend pushing them to service manager or asset manager directly? Right. right. So this is a, a common topic that happens to, that comes up with more, uh, a lot of customers, right? Um, the, the, the power of UCMDB uh, is about, you know, be able to discover and manage its dependencies through uh, application models and mappings. Uh, ASM is a technology to allow you to bring that top-down and bottom-up information into one view very quickly. And, and that model is used to support IT operation. And typically, uh, the critical models that you want to support are the ones that's uh, 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 high priority application that runs in the data center. So we traditionally ask customer to start with that and focusing on the data center application uh, topology mapping and use that to feed into uh, service, uh, you know, your ticketing system or your monitoring bot. Desktop application uh, traditionally could be, uh, well, desktop application traditionally are fairly flat, right? You've got a piece of software running on it, maybe connecting to the to to your your uh, back end, but typically runs on, on desktop alone. And those could be tracked and discovered using a discovery uh, through our uh, agent-based discovery. And the uh, use case for those would be used to support asset management or, um, uh, or inventory and software asset. Um, if you're using U universal discovery, obviously that data goes into UCMDB as well, but it's treated as a uh, uh, desktop inventory, uh, as an inventory uh, asset. And that information can be then integrated into asset manager uh, using our box uh, integration. Okay. Great. Sandy, are you ready? Um, should we pass it back to you or should we take a couple more questions? Looks like you're ready. Okay. Yep, I'm actually ready. Great. So we'll go All back right, to you okay. then. Thanks, Sean. All right. Thanks, Mark. So we were at the point where we, for our second use case, um, to start assisted modeling on our business application, which is to, I'll relate it back to our, our business service that I want to be this application part of. So what I do is click on the settings button on my CI and click on assisted modeling. So as soon as I do that, on the right hand side, I would see that I get a, another window uh, where I can select my template. And these are the templates that actually will decide what your overall topology of your service would look like in the UCMDB browser. Um, so if you have out of the box, you get out of the box, um, templates here, but you could actually create your custom templates as well. So once I did that, I can actually start assisted modeling, and it will actually provide me the topology view for my service. Um, and I'll, because I started with the new client, so that's already been selected as a business application, um, but actually, uh, as I mentioned earlier, you could actually just start blank as well. So once I select the new plans here, on the right-hand side, I get option to add relationships to, a, to an existing or new business service. So I'm going to create a new business service on the fly here, and I'm going to name it uh, Plants Service. And once I do that, I can also create a, assign a location CI as well as uh, ownership on the fly to my business service. So for location, for example, I can select the Paris and ownership I can give to HP Advantage Inc. And once I've selected all the parameters, I can actually click on apply. And that actually builds my relationship between the business service and the new plans application. So that's the point of uh, you know using the assisted modeling where traditionally you might have to go through additional steps in the modeling studio to build something like that. And same thing, I'm going to actually now relate my application uh, and select uh, running software. So for that, I'm just going to click on existing running software. It's going to populate the entire list for all the instances of running software for me. Uh, but I can actually filter it out for the one that I'm looking for. So in this case, I will actually just pick up the uh, Oracle Listener software CI for me. So once I've selected all the components of my template, I can click on the done on the button on the right hand side and save the model. And with those steps, that's pretty much, you know, you, you save the topology, save successfully. So now when I'm looking at my business service, uh, client service, 
uh, as a business service, I would actually see a topology where it is related to the business application, which is running a software uh, with a TNS listener. Um, you could actually, there are different templates that are available. So depending upon uh, how advanced you want to go with your application uh, topology model, uh, you could actually pre-select that uh, before you start your assisted modeling. So I'm going to go back to our presentation here. And we'll talk about the results and uh, some of the best practices that we would like to share with you uh, for our, both of our use cases. So in, our, in, the, in, the use case, so in the first use case, we're in the top-down uh, automated service uh, model discovery. Uh, we definitely recommend uh, creating and maintaining an inventory of your critical top-down service map. So you're actually keeping, uh, you're selecting your applications or services uh, based on your business objectives. Um, so you, ha you have the ASM uh, licenses. Uh, you probably want to use them wisely. And then the identify the target uh, uh, maps uh, and the primary application and the support supporting technologies. Just go through the list of the supporting technologies uh, by the latest ASM features. Uh, and also uh, uh, select the proper method to pr uh, do the drop-down discovery. We discussed that we could actually start with the URL or for some of the well-known uh, uh, applications, we do have pre-built perspectives uh, that could be used uh, in order to uh, model your application top-down. And then also evaluating and enhancing the service maps by adding the most uh, adding service layer or the perspectives uh, that we uh, demonstrated earlier. But I want to drill down further into network layer or to a node or OS layer. Um, so really using those features as a part of your top-down model uh, approach to consume the information is highly recommended. Uh, and then also uh, scheduling the automated service maps updates. Uh, so de by default, the scheduling uh, with the ASM feature is predefined, uh, but you could actually alter that and uh, make sure based on how your business requirements uh, or how dynamic your environments are, you may want to fine tune those um, uh, you know, discovery schedules. And then finally, communicate your availability of the service map to the uh, to, to the end users uh, who are actually going to consume and get value out of uh, those uh, service maps in different uh, uh, processes uh, within your uh, organization. For the assisted modeling uh, best practices, um, you uh, set up and maintain the portfolio of your uh, service mesh uh, topology templates. So some of them are available out of the box, um, but uh, we highly recommend that uh, some of the applications may be uh, topologically different than other applications, so you may want to uh, view uh, those uh, differently. And it really uh, depends upon uh, the end consumer that how they want to look up, look up, uh, or look at those uh, application topology. So they might be satisfied with the ones that are available out of the box, or, the, or you might have to create your own custom templates, which is pretty straightforward. Um, and then also um, using the additional information that is available in the CMDB to enhance your uh, modeling activities because the or overall goal of the modeling is to enhance your models further to have information such as location, who's the owner of the service, what are the different relationships, and how we can actually um, consume all the CIs together under the same umbrella. So that uh, information should be uh, uh, should be a part of your uh, overall assisted modeling practice. Uh, and also. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, leveraging your existing service models in the CUCMDB browser, so you could actually have them in your browser and further modify if there are uh, if there is a requirement to do so, and uh, you know uh, use your or uh, and get a higher rate of an, uh, return on investment. And then also uh, for the automated, uh, you know, for the uh, assisted service maps, you could actually create a uh, you know a, a scheduling scheme that keeps your maps up to date, and also. Finally, the same point, uh, communicate uh, the model enhancements to the end users so when and uh, as they are available. All right, I'll open the floor for the questions if there are any uh, questions that uh, we haven't answered so far. Great. Great. I actually have a lot of questions. There's been a lot of participation, and I, I uh, have to say thank you so much. It, it, you could tell is the... Uh, Sandeep, you, did, you gave a great presentation, great demo, and as you're going through the flow of your demo, uh, when you're hitting on the highlights, uh, the questions would just come rattling in. So uh, um, good interaction, and um, 
me see where I should. Uh, and and if Shaw, he's joined us. He's one of the product managers um, who's been providing some great responses to all the questions. Um, so let's uh, let's find a couple of highlights here. Shaw, was there some particular ones that uh, maybe uh, you wanted to address uh, in a in a verbal versus uh, typing it out because uh, there might be more context there. Yeah, there's a lot of questions. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Any particular favorites that you want to grab? Yeah. And uh... okay, so there's a couple ones. I just talk a little bit about the the ESM architecture, right? Uh, so one of the question was, uh, uh, um, uh, all the underlying CI, such as service, database, instance, uh, must be uh, discovered ahead of time before it can be modeled. Uh, so ASM, uh, the, the model of ASM is uh, it provides a, it allows you to kind of link your existing discovery effort with, uh, a, with the power of a top-down uh, discovery. Right, so if you have you know current infrastructure already discovered, and you want to simply saying I have an entry point now, and and that that represents an application, um, ASM will become a very effective tool to tie these two pieces together. So it will be it will definitely help if you have already have environment already discovered. You have spent good amount of investment to do uh, basically data center discovery. Um, but it's not a requirement, right? Because of uh, how you see the, the, the demo, when you uh, start with the entry point, ASM uh, piggybacks off the, the UD discovery pro, right? So it uses the same type of uh, triggering mechanism to do spiral discovery. So you will actually trigger uh, from the top down to the next level to go down deeper and discover individual components. Now, with that said, uh, it makes things a little bit slower because as you go through individual uh, the layer, you might uh, require to adding additional credentials or uh, additional uh, things you had to tell ASM to look for. Okay. So that's, okay. that's that question. And, um, and uh, okay, so there's a question around uh, the version support for ASM as well as assisted service modeling. So assisted service modeling exists for uh, uh, a, a, a couple of versions already. It's really is something that was introduced as part of the uh, UCMDB browser capability. So. Uh, you can use using the browser to actually uh, uh, do assisted service modeling, and uh, that could be done with the the 10, uh, 10, 11, 10, 20, and ten twenty one with uh, I believe starting from the UCMD browser four release. Okay, uh, but ASM was something that was added to support uh, for the ten twenty release, and the latest release of uh, UCMD is ten twenty one. Which is a minor minor on top of 1020, and uh, and then, uh, the ASM package itself is uh, is a separate package that you can download from Live Network, and that package uh, will support both 1020 and 1021. For example, the the demo you saw today, uh, the version of UCMDB is actually running on 1020. Great. You just answered like three questions as I was going through picking a question to ask you next. You kind of like answered it. <laughs> try, to, try to be efficient here. So. Yeah. So are some good ones here. Can uh, ASM be accessed from UCMDB main screen or is it only from a browser? Yeah, so uh, that's also a good question. Yes, ASM can also be accessed through the traditional admin UI of UCMDB. Great. And then, um, could you let us know if the list out uh, prerequisite for creating service models? Um, okay, we'll come back to that one. It sounds as if ASM discovery is separate and different, separate and different from universal discovery. Is this correct? So there are some uh, uh, things we added in to ASM to do uh, more targeted discovery triggers. But it, it, it uses fundamentally uses the same uh, universal discovery 
uh, agentless discovery uh, capability. Okay. And uh, there's also a question about the browser. Does the browser consume a license? So uh, the browser does not consume a license. You can uh, simply get the browser from the HP Live network and, and configure that uh, on top of your CMDB. Great, great. Well, it looks like we're we're getting to the top of the hour. We've got uh, obviously plenty more questions, but I think what we'll do is we'll respond to those, and then as part of the replay, we'll make the uh, questions and answers available. Um, and then, by all means, um, you can reach out to any one of us to uh, to follow up with your your discussions and, and questions and. Um, so I uh, just question, uh, Mark. Uh, when we answer these questions on the, the uh, question list uh, after we finish, uh, the user is not going to be able to see it, right? We, they will have to come back and uh, download the recording. Or I think we're going. Um, maybe there's a way we can export it into a text file of some sort and then uh, attach it as part of the uh, PDF when they download it. Yes, and Mark, just a clarification on that. Anyone that registered for the webinar or that even couldn't attend, they will get a link to the Vivid website and there will be posted the recording, the PDF of these slides, as well as a written question and answer document that you will provide back to me. That Q&A may be a, a few days delayed after the recording and the slides, but it will be there for future reference. Great. Thank you very much. Great. So as we Mark, wrap... Mark uh, before as you get ready to wrap up, I just wanted to thank everyone for attending. Wanted to thank uh, Sandeep for uh, walking through and demonstrating the technology. Uh, Mark, appreciate uh, you and uh, Shaw going through and helping with the, the answers uh, to everyone's questions. And I'll turn it over to you to kind of highlight uh, the uh, conclusion here and uh, some of the resources and uh, some of your current uh, promotions that uh, people can get uh, access to. Great. Thank you, John. Thank you, Sandeep. Thank you, Shaw. You guys, great job today. A lot of great material, amazing technology. Um, the idea behind these webinars was to uh, go ahead to the next slide. Um, the idea behind these webinars was to uh, not make it a marketing event, but make it a uh, hands-on, useful um, experience. And, and we heard our customers from HP Discover uh, they're in the roundtables, they're in the uh, uh, customer advisory boards, they wanted more content. And so we've got a series of webinars. If you like today's discussion and, and uh, want to do more Q&A, this, uh, this is right up your alley. These are the ones we have scheduled. And then as we continue to uh, uh, set it up and set up the registration links, we'll, we'll keep you abreast as to uh, uh, what's happening. And then these will all parlay into HP Discover which is, uh, I believe, the next slide, where we have uh, a number of resources to, uh, uh, one, help you uh, convince your manager that uh, HP Discover is where you want to be. So there's some um, videos, some highlights, top 10 reasons, as well as the attendance letter so that you can take and modify that letter um, to your liking. And then the next slide is, is um, Vivid, or as part of this, there's some additional resources, brochures, white papers, demos, case studies. These are the links to, to help uh, get you that information, follow our blogs. And then the last uh, slide here, as part of HP Discover, as, as a Vivid member, uh, you have a special discount. Use this link as, as part of your registration process. Uh, you'll get the uh, special Vivid rate for HP Discover. And um, you'll also be able to uh, maybe take some time and, and check out some of the uh, Vivid uh, breakout sessions. So this, uh, this concludes our, our presentation today. Thank you so much for attending. Looking forward to seeing you at the next uh, presentation. And um, have a great day, evening, or morning.